The African Youth Initiative on Climate Change is the biggest uh, youth uh, movement in Africa. We have uh, uh, 45 country chapters and over 20,000 members in Africa and diaspora. Uh, and uh, yeah, we organize our second edition of the African Youth Conference on Climate Change. And this year, uh, we're looking at how can climate finance work for young people. And I, and I know that the Paris Agreement uh, had uh, you know, a lot of punch lines on, uh, on climate financing. So as we move to COP22, uh, you know, my expectation is that I would want to see more young people involved uh, uh, in the implementation of the nationally determined contributions and also to get young negotiators involved uh, as part of government delegations so that, uh, you know, there will be a transition of knowledge and skills from the, uh, you know, the you know, African group of negotiators to the uh, young negotiators. The Climb Dev African Youth Platform brings together youth organizations and networks working in climate change from all over Africa and in diaspora. It's a platform whereby youth are able to share experiences, share knowledge, and look for best solutions to fight climate change. As we move towards COP22, COP of Actions, we look we call on world leaders to further reduce their emissions as their previous emissions, previous reductions is not enough. And we also call on them to finally and give us the climate finance we deserve. Climate justice is what we need. I'm coordinating the Youth Negotiations on Climate Change Convention, which is operating under the Horn of African Environmental Center and which is a part of Addis Ababa University. So the need for this initiative is basically to link the youth with ongoing climate change uh, responses in Africa. So when you say responses in Africa, it includes negotiations, climate science, and innovation and entrepreneurship on climate change. I'm with a Crime Dev Youth Platform. I'm also uh, representing uh, an organization called Green Enviro Watch. And uh, our mandate is to help counter the adverse effects of climate change and also helping to build resiliency in the most affected communities as a result of uh, adverse effects of climate change. I am a singer and a songwriter, an artist that is, and I use my platform as a way to educate others, the youth mostly, because this is what we are focused on, on issues that curb climate change. As we move forward to COP22, we believe that more opportunities should be given for, to young people in climate change policies and negotiations to ensure that the issues that affect us as young people are also integrated. And this is because young people represent the, the link between the past, the present and the future generations. Therefore, whatever is, is being done at the continental level, at the international level as regards climate change policy negotiations should also ensure that the voices of young people are there. Um, in COP22, AIC will be having its side events to highlight what the youth are doing on, on, on green initiative, climate smart agriculture, and then also to launch the African Youth Artists Unite Against Climate Change and then the Green Book to also showcase what the youth are doing because we feel that the youths are, are key stakeholders in climate change. I am in the farm university where we incubate knowledge, new knowledge, new techniques for agriculture that can help create uh, spirals of jobs and interests in keeping Africans home. And of course, most significantly is that aspect, quote unquote, climate change. If we don't invest on agriculture, we talk on climate change, we just be talk, talk, no action. So the Young African Lawyers program started in 2015. So we've been thinking about um, how to build the capacity of lawyers in the process. The reason why we chose and focused on lawyers was uh, we do have technical people in the process. We have experienced people in the process, but lawyers in the UNFCCC negotiations were few and that whoever is in the room is needed everywhere else. So the idea was to build the capacity of lawyers from all over Africa to support their countries and also the multilateral processes and the negotiations on climate change. Also, uh, Marrakesh should be a cope of implementation. And the question is that will Marrakesh deliver for Africa? And it's left to us for us to go there and push the agenda of Africa, especially uh, you know, drawing 
uh, linkages to Africa Agenda 2063. From the youth who are going to Morocco, I would like to ask them to have uh, some projects which are more related to climate change and they can be adopted in a wider perspective, not only in Africa but globally. So young people are the ones that will fly with the Paris Agreement. Uh, young people are the ones that we own the Paris Agreement. Young people are the ones that we implement the Paris Agreement. So therefore they should be mainstreamed at all levels, from the national level, uh, through the National Climate Change Committees, uh, to the regional level, through meetings and platforms like the African Group of Negotiators, uh, you know, AMSEN, uh, African Ministerial Conference on Environment, uh, and also through forums like the Climate Change and Development Conference in Africa. Expectations are high and we, we expect that, uh, you know, uh, the pledges uh, uh, that were made by the developed countries will, will be fulfilled. As uh, everybody is saying that uh, COP22 is it's an implementing COP and where there, there are no finances, where there are no resources, it uh, cannot be an implementing COP. So in this regard, we expect uh, uh, resources to be available uh, for, you know, uh, uh, the Paris uh, Agreement uh, to, to be realized, to be implemented in Africa. So for me, I'm re really looking at means of implementation and enabling youth to access the means of implementation. So they should elaborate more on capacity building and on issues of finance and technology transfer, not only country level, but also to the small emerging initiatives and the small organization that are basically about youth. So give them the know-how. It's, it's very easy to, to deal with young generations and they certainly can gather up and do something bigger. My view on this conference is uh, basically <clears throat> getting young people's voices heard and uh, setting a youth position paper that we can take with to COP22. And uh, specifically the main target of why young people should get together is because we don't have enough of these platforms. If you look at our delegations that go to the UN General Assembly and also other climate change conferences and summits, there's a small representation of youth. And uh, my view on this conference provides that avenue and platform for young people of Africa to put forth their views on climate change and also offer solutions and um, uh, also have a say in the future which is theirs to, to begin with. Myself, an artist, I see the need to protect my environment and to you know, create awareness based on climate change and climate justice. And from an African group perspective, there's four aspects that are important there. The information should contain an understanding of vulnerability and priorities. There should be information on plans and actions that parties undertake. There must be uh, information on implementation needs and support. And lastly, uh, the reporting on adaptation efforts that our countries are undertaking. Those are the key features under which we should define the information that is provided. So my message to them is that uh, they should also listen to the, to the African youths because our youths are the leaders of today and since we are more exposed and we understand these things so, so much, then they should actually listen to us and they should be ready to, to fund us so that we can spearhead our projects for the purpose of mitigating the effects of climate change for uh, the generations that is to come after us. It's time for action. Time to speak, time to talk, time to put uh, good policies on the paper has come to, shouldn't come to an end, but there should be more of implementation. We, we, we are done with, with just talking. It's time now to put our words into action and to ensure that there is more impact, not only in, in our communities, but also on the African continent and the world at large. Young people are the ones that will inherit the climate system in whatever way government uh, leave it. So we are the ones uh, that is the life generation and we are going to stand up and fight for our place in the future.